In the world of product design, we use a phrase to help us understand the purpose of a product or maybe more accurately to describe a product to market fit. This phrase helps us understand who will be buying the product and what purpose the product serves or basically um, how a consumer will justify spending money on the product. The phrase that we use is jobs to be done. The idea with jobs to be done is that when any of us spend money on a product, it's essentially like we're hiring the product to do a job for us. We employ it. Using this phrase helps a product designer like me get very specific about what a product like this will do when it's in the hands of a user um, rather than just designing a product in a vacuum or a theoretical place where we might miss the boat completely, design something that nobody really wants. Today I want to talk about the, this product right here, the Nikon ZFC, and I want to do it from the perspective of a product designer, and I want to ask the question, what are the jobs to be done with this product? In so doing, I hope to help you understand who I think this product was created for, and why for most of you watching this, it's probably not the product for you. So let's start there with who you are. Um, the majority of people watching this, I actually know who you are because I look at the demographic data and I talk to you guys. Roughly, most of you are 30 to 55 years old. You're mostly from the US, although we have plenty from Canada and Europe as well. You're mostly men. Most of you have expendable income. Most of you are not pro photographers, but you are who I would call prosumer photographers. You might occasionally do pro jobs. You might be qualified to do pro jobs, but you have a solid full-time job and you do photography on the side. You care a lot about quality cameras because you care a lot about the quality of the output and the art itself. You care about the craft of photography and you care about the culture and community of photography. For many of you, the classic stylings of a camera from yesteryear and that filmic process brings a sense of nostalgia and uh, that's a nostalgia that makes its way into your purchasing decisions. It's why many of you associate uh, shooting on a camera like this, um, the X100V with fond memories, or other Fuji cameras or Leicas, or why many of you are still occasionally like me shooting with film. In other words, most of you are a lot like me, which is probably why you're subscribed to my channel. But some of you are not like that at all. You're here because you searched for this and you don't know anything about me. Uh, many of you don't fit into the demographic data I just laid out for you um, that most of my subscribers are. Many of you are a lot younger. You're looking for either your first mirrorless camera or you're looking to upgrade from a DSLR or a cheaper, older mirrorless camera of some kind. You probably have more experience shooting with your phone and creating a lot of content with that. And the reason that you're looking at a camera like this is because you want a more powerful video or photo capability. You also want inter interchangeable lenses and more flexibility about when and how you shoot. For you folks, you may not have ever shot with an actual film camera but the classic stylings and looks of this camera appeals to you. So for you folks the jobs to be done of this camera or the reason that you're looking to hire it is because one it's a modern mirrorless camera two with excellent video and photo specs Three, uh, it's very similar to the Nikon Z50, um, which you probably looked at, but this one has a flippable screen, which if you're interested in that, it probably means that you shoot video um, and are a content creator of some kind. And four, you like the appealing um, vintage looking style. Um, you guys, you people, this is this camera was designed for you and you'll probably love it. It'll probably work. You don't necessarily have preconceived notions of how a camera should act, feel or function um, beyond the specs that you need to get your job done. Um, and if I was in your shoes, I'd probably be deciding between this camera, like I said, the, Z, the Nikon Z50 or the Fuji X-S10, which you haven't looked at. I would encourage you to look at that as well and compare it. But for you folks, unless you're really just taken with the classic stylings here and absolutely need this um, articulating screen, you'd probably be, be better off with the more affordable Nikon Z50. But if I was a content creator, I'd personally be really excited about the articulating screen and I'd be deciding between, like I said, this and the XS10. Um, so if that's you, you can stop watching. This is a fabulous content creation tool for photo and video, and I have no trouble recommending it to you.
But for my people, for you prosumers out there, this camera is going to be disappointing. For most of you, the jobs to be done of this camera is to provide an experience. It's to package up everything you love about the analog photography experience and wrap it up into a, the promise of all that nostalgia in a mirrorless package. You probably already do have a great camera though, um, and it probably gets you great photos. If this camera appeals to you, it's because it looks a lot like the film cameras you used to love, like this one, or you want to love. This is my favorite ca uh, film camera of all time. This is the Nikon FE2. You, you guys know that I love this camera. And then look how similar they look. So when I first saw that teaser video, I was super excited, not because I needed a new camera, but because the, the process of shooting um, with a tool that inspires me is nearly as important to me as um, the output itself. So if I could get a digital version of my favorite film camera of all time, I mean, yes, take my money. But having said all that, I am sad to report to you that we are not, you and I are not who this camera was designed for. And the reason I know is because a, a number of things. The first is um, the way that it feels. It's kind of, it feels plasticky fantastic. Um, I know that much of this was used with magnesium alloy, but much of it is also just plain flimsy plastic. And it feels that way too. When you heft, and I use the word heft, <laughs> an analog film camera, it's reassuring uh, the weight, the presence, that cold metal on your hands, the clicking metal, um, it's the dials, the latches, it's all pleasing. With the Nikon ZFC, not so much. It's not reassuring. It it rattles and it's you can hear it it sounds like a very expensive toy and it feels like one too and um when we look at ergonomics we also realize that the exterior was made to look like a vintage camera but not feel like one these dials do not feel the same as these dials um i'm trying not to compare too much to fuji but definitely not these dials um and so that right there is is pr probably all you need to know <laughs> that enough that's enough for me to not want to use this camera um but to be clear again going back to who this camera was designed for if you are new to photography you haven't shot with mirrorless cameras in the past you haven't used a camera like this one or you know others like it um you don't have those preconceived notions and that's not why you shoot that's not that important right um, none of that's that big of a deal and i would still recommend this camera but again from 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 folks who have this will be disappointing the next biggest disappointment and actually the camera itself is powerful it works great and i could talk about the specs but there's nothing there to be disappointed at honestly um, from a video or photo perspective i would use this it would work great it does work great what doesn't work so great the biggest limitation of this platform is the lens situation currently the lens lineup for the nikon aps-c or the dx whatever system it's a little cringeworthy and i i hope there's intentions to make it more robust but right now there's nothing on offer that comes anywhere near what is available on Fuji APS-C. Um, and there's not really a good upgrade path unless you adapt to those huge Z lenses. Um, on this camera, we have the two choices currently. This lens is the 16 to 50, 3.5 to 6.3 VR lens. And I hate this lens. Honestly, for someone like me who almost never is at a loss for words when it comes to lenses, normally I could talk about lenses. I love talking about lenses, ad nauseum. I make video after video about lenses. I just have no interest in talking about this. I absolutely hate it. This right here is the deal breaker for me. Needing to manually unlock the lens to use it every single time is a non-starter. I just have no interest. I would rather review, what, which I do regularly, and talk about any number of TT Artisan, which are so just kind of dirt cheap affordable lenses so much more interesting or I would rather get something like this an adapter and put it on here and then adapt what lens should have been in my opinion on this camera or lens that, that feels and functions like that and that's something like this right um, this is the 24 millimeter f2 um, Nikkor which I love it's my favorite film camera lens or one of them and that's the experience I was looking for, right? That we all kind of wanted when we saw a camera like this. Not 
whatever this is. It's just, this is horrible. Um, but again, I'm not who this was designed for, I don't think. So like I said, I did get an adapter, um, and I do adapt, and I love adapting, but um, here's where we get to my big confession. As you guys know, when I get a new camera, I get excited. I get inspired to go out and try to get as many photos as possible um, with that new device so that when I present to you guys um, all the findings that I have, I have decent things to say, and I have good photos, potentially, or, or photos I'm pleased with that I can show you and um, that I can talk intelligently about the experience. And I find that process super inspiring. But with this camera, whenever I looked at it and thought about taking it out and getting some shots, I just felt empty. I had no desire to touch it or use it at all. There's nothing inspiring about it. There's nothing to get excited about. It fails to do the job I hired it to do. And for that reason, I don't have a lot of photos to show. Um, I'll show them to you now, whatever I have. But that's all I got. I really am sad this review isn't more exciting, guys. I really am sad that Nikon didn't make the camera that I hoped that they would, but maybe that's okay. Maybe we're not Nikon's uh, market. Um, maybe they're happy to let Leica and Fuji have that market. Either way, as I said in the beginning, this camera does have a place and it does serve a market, but as for me, it was a complete miss. Um, what I wanted to see was a full frame Nikon that functioned and felt like an analog camera. That's what I, that's what I hoped that they had, but sadly, not what we got. But that's all for now, guys. Remember to do some good with your cameras, and we'll talk to you again real soon.